Today I'll be heading to the UK's biggest forest park. This forest park is really special because on a clear night you can see over 7,000 stars and planets with the naked eye. Very few people live in this forest park and it's home to a lot of wildlife and ancient woodland. Let's go and explore Scotland's Galloway Forest Park. You can enter the Galloway Forest Park from many different directions, but today I entered from Newton Stewart. And the first stop that I've arrived at is a place called Murray's Monument, which you can see behind me. Let's go and take a closer look. The Highlands of Scotland are known for their amazing hills and views, but Southern Scotland has amazing places too. Look at that behind me. That is amazing. Galloway Forest Park there is wonderful mountain biking and gravel biking has become very popular in recent years in the Galloway Forest Park. There's also fantastic mountain biking in other parts of Dumfries and Galloway too such as Dilbeatie Forest and Maybe Forest as well. People travel from all over to come and do mountain biking here. When I was younger I used to do a lot of mountain biking and the trails are really fantastic so if you're into mountain biking I recommend you to try it out and there's places that you can also rent bikes if you don't have your own. I've almost arrived at the top. It's around a 15, 20 minute walk. But the views in every direction are stunning. The whole area just has a tinge of orange with it being autumn. Wow, spectacular. Okay, I think I've arrived here at Murray's Monument. Wow, so much bigger up close. <gasps> I actually have a book about Alexander Murray and I've been reading the history about him and it's absolutely fascinating. What I find most interesting about this story is that in the 1800s when this monument was constructed, 3,000 people came here to watch the unveiling of the monument. That's unbelievable. Murray's monument was erected in the 1800s in honour of a man called Alexander Murray. He was born in 1775 and was a self-taught Scottish linguist and scholar who made significant contributions to the field of philology and oriental languages. He was born nearby here to a shepherd and farm labourer. He received limited formal education but impressed with his language skills. He gained admission to Edinburgh University and became a professor of Oriental languages in 1812. He had a short life and died in 1813, aged only 38, but he left a lasting legacy in his linguistics and literature. So the next spot I've arrived at is called Grey Mare's Waterfall. Well, there it is behind me. Wow, it looks amazing. It's the end of October now and the water's getting colder. Let me know in the comments if you'd still go in swimming in October. I think I would. I was in just two weeks ago in the sea though, so it might be a different temperature than the fresh water. Looks like you can get a better view from the other side, so I'm going to head over there. I made it really close to the waterfall. You can probably hear it. Wow. Wow, this is beautiful. at the point where the walk starts to the cottage where Alexander Murray was born. Let's go and have a look. It's our 30 minute round trip. This is how walls used to be built and people would collect stones and then build these walls and they'd be used to keep cattle or sheep inside one specific area. I know in Scotland and Ireland these are really common but let me know if you have dikes in your country. I know other countries around the world use different methods back in the day. Making these dikes is quite an art actually and in this area there are dike courses so you can come and you can learn how to do dike making which I think is really nice. The cottage has come into view, it's just ahead. Oh it's so cute! Dunkitterick Cottage is Alexander Murray's birthplace. His passion for learning was encouraged by his family here despite their limited means. When he was just six years old, his 70-year-old father taught him how to read and write using burnt heather stocks on old wool card. Let's go inside the house. 
I think some of the walls might have been reconstructed in recent years. Oh, it was quite a small structure. Probably would have only been two rooms, maybe a living room and kitchen area, and then also an area for sleeping as well. Look at the views out the window. How amazing is that? Wow. It's said that this was a very difficult place to live back in the day, back in the 1700s and 1800s because it was so remote and so isolated. It was very difficult to get to school. Throughout Scotland, you'll find different abandoned buildings like this and you'll just find the stone remnants of a place that people used to live. Hundreds of years ago, due to different circumstances, people left Scotland and emigrated to different countries. A lot of people went to the United States, to Canada, and even some of my relatives moved to New Zealand. Some of those relatives from New Zealand have come back to Scotland in recent years, and we've gone looking for the property where their family used to live, and it is also in this area. It's actually quite close to the Galloway Forest Park too, and they've managed to find the building where their ancestors once lived, which is amazing. I just wonder how many families found it so tough such a long time ago and then did emigrate to different places. If you know a story about your family, perhaps you have Scottish ancestry and your family left Scotland and we might have lived in a place like this. Please leave a comment below and share the story. It'd be very interesting to hear about that. Galloway Forest Park there is a lot of wildlife to see and the spot I've just arrived at is a place that you can see wild goats. I've just pulled up I'm going to go and look for some just now. So at the goat park here it says that you're not allowed to feed them bread sweets or crisps so I assume other food is okay things like carrots or apples and the type of goats that you can find here are called British primitive goats and a long time ago our ancestors here in Scotland would keep goats mostly for their milk for their meat and also for their skin in this area here it's said that there's around 50 goats living and then there's hundreds more here are also some of the birds that you can find in this area but the, the views here are so amazing Yes, doesn't seem to be any goats here at the moment. Last time I was here, there were lots. Gotti, gotti, gotti! Nothing, no goats. They're away, away on their holidays. Just kidding. <laughs> just arrived at the Red Deer Park which is one of the best things to come and see here in the Galloway Forest Park. Deer are quite easy to see as you're traveling in Scotland especially if you go to the countryside but if you don't happen to see any deer and you want to see deer this is a really great place to come. If you do come you can bring some carrots or some snacks for the deer like I've done so let's go and see if they like the carrots. I'm just walking towards and there's already deer here. Oh they're looking at the carrots. <laughs> If you come here, you need to bring carrots. They love carrots. They're all leaving now. They know all the carrots are gone. No more carrots, guys. Oh, they could really smell the carrots so far away. That's them, fed for their dinner. The Red Deer Range was founded in 1977 and approximately 25 red deer call this place home. Behind me is one of the car parks where you can stay overnight in the forestry, so it's £7, you can pay on the app and then you can stay here and then this one here has a toilet disposal area which is great. find scones in the supermarket so I think the best ones I had were cranberry and white chocolate. The 
Bellamy Forest Park is a really huge area. This time I'm just exploring a very small section of it and you could spend really quite a few days or even a week exploring the whole of the Galloway Forest Park. So when you're in this area you can often see trucks full of logs that have been chopped down. So I don't really know much about the forestry industry in this country. Uh, in Japan I learned quite a lot when I was there. I know about the whole cedar growing industry and how a lot of towns became abandoned because the price of cedar went down. So I don't, I don't know if these are cedar trees. I'll need to do some research about that. And yeah, it seems that there's a lot of these trees that have been planted. They're not sort of natural ancient woodlands, although there are some of those as well as part of the Galloway Forest Park. Oh, quite a boggy path if you do come along here. It's better to bring your hiking boots. Oh, that was absolutely freezing. I think I just lasted about 15 seconds in the water, but it was really good and I've got my coffee here to warm me up. Really enjoyed wild swimming this year, whether that's in the sea or in rivers or small pools in streams. It's really hard at first when you start doing it because it is so cold. When I started in December, the sea was five degrees Celsius and then throughout the summer it's obviously got warmer and I find quite easy to go in now but once it starts getting colder again it will become more challenging. Wild swimming can be so good for you because if you're going through a tough time, I know everyone goes through tough times in their lives and your heart is full of pain, going into the cold water can relieve that pain for a few seconds even and I found it's been really helpful for me this year. Just near the waterfall are these stone faces on top of the dike here. Here's another one. Oh, she doesn't look very happy, does she? I've arrived at the spot that I want to do the stargazing at tonight. It does look a bit cloudy at the moment, but hopefully it clears up a bit later on and we can see some of these amazing stars here in the dark sky park. While I'm waiting for it to get dark, I'm going to start preparing dinner. I've been receiving some questions recently asking what is Scottish food? So there is actually some traditional Scottish food and I've bought some today. I'm going to cook it in the van and I'll show you what is Scottish food. So this is what I'm going to be cooking tonight. Haggis is this one here. I'll open it up and show you in a moment. This is neeps, so neeps are turnips. In Scotland we call them neeps. And then mashed potato, basically. So this is, yeah. Haggis is a dish from Scotland which includes the liver, heart and lungs of a sheep or other animal. It's minced and mixed with different things including oatmeal and onion. It actually has quite a spicy flavour to it. It's then put into a sheep's stomach and boiled. I'm having vegetarian haggis today. Haggis, neeps and tatty. Okay, so for the haggis, you can cook it in three different ways. You can boil it, you can put it in the oven or the microwave. I Probably the microwave would be the easiest one, but there's no microwave in the camper van. So boiling is what I'm going to do today. I'll show you what the haggis looks like. It's a bit too wet. And this is the haggis. It's a bit like a fat sausage. It's got plastic on the outside and then it's tied on each end. So in order to boil it, I need to wrap it in foil, aluminium foil. Then I'm going to boil the water and once that's boiling, I'll put it in for 45 minutes. Here's the saucepan. I'll fill this with water now and then boil it. The neeps and tatties are intended for the microwave. I think it's probably possible to heat them up in the pan. I'll do that when the haggis is almost ready. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to start making the whiskey sauce. Haggis neeps and tatties is often served with a whiskey sauce. So I'm going to try and make that for the first time in my life. For the whiskey sauce, I have a recipe that I found on a website called scottishscran.com if anyone wants to make the same recipe. So first I need to add the butter to the pan and then add the whiskey. And when you add whiskey sauce, you actually need to light the whiskey on fire and it will burn off the alcohol. However, I'm not really sure I want to do that in the camper van just because it's a small space and there are things that could be quite, quite flammable in here. I might skip that step. I think it's okay to do that. It just, does, it just tastes a bit more of alcohol if you miss that, which is not a bad thing. Let's try giving it a go anyway. So let's put the knob of butter in first. Okay, so the butter is melting. Next, I'm going to add some whiskey. So I just popped it in this jar here. Three tablespoons. Oh, <laughs> 
butter and the whiskey. So they recommend you to light the whiskey on fire here. I think I'll just let it simmer a little bit or maybe I can do it outside, but okay, I really want this to taste good. So I've brought it outside. I don't know if it needs to be on the heat. So let's try. Oh, 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 I've got a flame. Can you see it? Well, that would have been okay in the van. Oh, there we go. Wow. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Wow, it smells like a distillery in here. Okay, so next. Now the flame has gone out, I need to add the cream, stock and mustard. Got the double cream. Oh. I've got 50 ml of veggie stock. So I just used a piece of a stock cube and some of the boiling water. And I need to add a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. So now all the ingredients are added, I need to let it heat and then it's going to thicken up and then I'll add some salt and pepper for taste. And if you like whiskey, you can then add a little bit more at the end. However, you don't burn it off at the end. Let's see how the wee haggis boy is doing. Oh, he's bubbling away. Let's turn, turn him over. Okay, the sauce has been bubbling away for about 20 minutes and it's really starting to thicken up now. In Scotland, when cutting open a haggis, there's a tradition to recite a poem called Address to the Haggis. This poem was written by Robert Burns, a famous Scottish poet. People often recite it during a burn supper, which is held on January the 25th every year to celebrate Robert Burns' birthday. At school, I learnt many Burns poems, and I remember the first verse to the Address to the Haggis, I did recite it, but unfortunately the camera was filming in slow motion and didn't record the audio. So here is me cutting open the haggis in slow motion, and here is me reciting again the first verse of the address to the haggis. Fair fai on a sonsi face, great chief in the pudding race, a bin the ma ye tak your place, pinch tripe or therm. Wheel are ye wordy o a grace, as langs my arm. Here is the haggis on the right side, the vegetarian haggis, the neeps, this one here, and then the tatties. So this is the traditional burn supper dinner and I'm going to add the whiskey sauce next. Okay, I've added the whiskey sauce. This is what it looks like with the whiskey sauce on top. Okay, the haggis, neeps, tatties, and whiskey sauce is ready. Let's try. Mmm. Oh, the whiskey sauce is delicious. So creamy, so much flavor. Wow, that whiskey sauce is really good. I'll leave the link to the recipe down below. I think it was called scottishgrand.com, a recipe website of Scottish recipes. So if you'd like to try making it, you can give it a go. This is an excellent van life dinner. Definitely we'll have this again. The dinner turned out perfectly. It was absolutely delicious. That whiskey sauce was unbelievable. I will put the link to the recipe below so if anyone wants to make it, uh, you can check it out. I've just filled up my hot water bottle and I'm going to head outside and see if I can see any stars. I've also got my tea. It's actually getting quite cold in Scotland. Every night I stay in the van, I can feel it getting colder and colder. So I'm planning to come up with some ideas of how to winterize the van and make it a bit more comfortable for living in during the winter months because I do want to continue using the van. I really enjoy traveling in it and staying in it and also in winter even though it is darker it's just much quieter as well for traveling in Scotland and I really love going to places when they're quiet. Now time to embrace the outside and go and see if there's any stars. So tonight looks quite cloudy. I can only really see the moon. There's the moon up there. Unfortunately not a great night since it's so cloudy but I'll check again later and if it does clear up I'll try and take a photo of the stars. So I've actually been reading a little bit about 
how to take photos of the stars. It's something I really want to learn how to do. On some of the tutorials on YouTube it says when the moon is out it's not great, it brightens up the, the sky too much and it's quite hard to get photos of the stars so it's better if you go out to do photography on nights when the, the moon is smaller uh, which is quite interesting but yeah today the moon is huge. I didn't check before I came. I think there's an app you can download so I'll, I'll do that in the future if I want to actually go and take photos but it's very bright tonight. It was a shame I couldn't see any stars this time, but it's a reason to come back again. I had a great time exploring this small corner of the beautiful Galloway Forest Park, a place often referred to as the Highlands of the Lowlands. I often share photos from my trips on Instagram, so feel free to have a look. If you'd like to see more of my adventures traveling Scotland, please subscribe to the channel. See you next time!